Hi, I'm Larry Puckett. Today I want to start painting track here on the module. You know, that for me is the first step in the scenery work uh, on any model railroad. Okay, before we get started, I want to ask you to take a second to subscribe. Click on the subscribe box and click on the little bell right next to it and click all. That way you'll be notified every time that I upload a new video. Well, let's go ahead and get started with painting track here on the modules. You know, there are three uh, lines of thought on this. You know, there's first the people that don't paint track at all. They're, I don't know if they're afraid to do it or they just don't think it's necessary. I'm not sure what it is, but that's their thing, that's fine. Uh, then there's a second group that uh, believe that you should ballast your track first, then do your painting. And that, uh, in effect, weathers both the rails and the, tra and the uh, ballast and the roadbed, the whole thing, at the same time. Now, I'm of the third opinion, the third line of thought. I prefer to go ahead and first uh, do the uh, painting of the track and then go ahead and paint the top of the foam, whatever color uh, I'm going to use as an undercoat uh, for my scenery, and then I apply the ballast and get that laid out. And then finally, I'll come back after the ballast is all dry and fixed in place, and I'm happy with it, and I will go ahead and weather the, uh, weather the uh, rails and the road bed and the ballast as one uh, component. And the reason I do that that way is because I feel that it gives me much more control over the weathering process. Because if you, you know, apply your ballast and, and just spray away trying to cover your rails and get a good even coverage of your rails, I feel that it's going to give you a very thick uh, coating of paint on your, on your ballast as well. And for this module and for, you know, for, for the GWR uh, during the steam era, uh, they used a very light gray ballast on the main track. And then outside of that, they put a line of dark gray ballast. So you've got that very sharp uh, demarcation, that very sharp line between the edge of the, uh, the almost white gray ballast and the darker stuff on the outside. Um, and I think that if you apply uh, a heavy coat of, of, of paint while you're doing your rails, to your ballast at the same time, it's really going to overdo it on that light gray ballast. Now, it might be a different issue if you are using a very dark gray ballast or a dark brown ballast, you know, something like that, that it's not going to uh, affect it as much. But that's my approach. So what I'm going to do today then, uh, for this, uh, I typically use uh, a, a product uh, from uh, Badger, uh, Modiflex acrylic paint. And I've been using acrylic paint ever since Accuflex came out back in the mid 90s and have gotten quite used to it. And uh, this stuff, the one I use is uh, number 16 176 Roof Brown. And I think that gives you a nice dark brown color. You know, uh, very seldom will you see rails that are really a light rust color, that very orange rust color. It's only when rails are brand new that they will look like that. Generally, uh, they, they weather to a, a darker brown and then almost, almost black uh, look to them. Plus, if they're heavily used, they'll pick up a layer of grunge, grease, oil, that kind of stuff, drippings uh, on the sides uh, of the rails as well just from you know, the, the movement of the cars and locomotives uh, over them. So I like a, 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 a nice dark brown color for mine. And so I pretty much settled on using this. Sometimes I will actually add some uh, black to it or, or some Pullman green to give some variations. But for this, I'm just gonna use straight roof brown uh, diluted with water uh, to apply uh, here. And unfortunately, because it's gotten cold outside, I can't take the modules out in the driveway to do this. I'm gonna to have to do them down here in the, the layout room, which means I'm gonna to have to use the vacuum cleaner to, uh, to take the overspray uh, as I apply the paint. So what I wanna do now then is come around in the front, because I've got some things I wanna show you as far as prep work for uh, spray painting. Okay, so the first thing I wanna uh, show you, uh, in order to protect the fascia and the shelf and all the stuff that you know I've installed here on the front end, 
of the layout, uh, I took uh, some plastic sheeting and let me get this out of the way. And using a, uh, a putty knife, a wide putty knife, I just tucked it down here between the edge of the uh, foam sub road bed or scenery base and the front of the fascia here. And that way I can just drape it back over the front of the uh, fascia and that's going to protect it from any overspray and any damage uh, that might occur from me getting in here working uh, on the front of the layout. Okay, one thing that I uh, believe in doing is protecting certain parts of turnouts before you start spray painting. And the reason for that is, particularly here, if you are using insole frog turnouts or you, if you are using electrofrogs and you've got them set up for power routing so that they are depending on uh, the physical contact between the point rails and the uh, stock rails for uh, electrical continuity, you don't want to get paint down in here. So uh, basically, you need to protect these guys here. Now, in my case, since I am using a physical uh, connection here uh, uh, between the stock rails and the closure rails, point rails, I'm not concerned about paint getting down in here because I don't depend on that physical connection. But I still am going to cover it anyway because I don't want, I, I, I want to make sure that these points are going to close firmly. Uh, and, and for that reason, I'm going to go ahead. I took some blue painter's tape and I just cut some strips. Uh, they're, you know, about a third of an inch, something like that. And then I'm just going to put those right over the points themselves here. Now, another area that you definitely want to always protect, no matter whether you're, uh, which way you're wiring your, your turnouts, is this contact between the point rails and the closure rails. Because the point rails uh, are just press fit down in here uh, over top of a metal contact uh, with the uh, closure rails. If any paint or glue or anything else like that gets down in here, it can interfere with your electrical connection. So I'm definitely going to put another piece of blue painter's tape right over that point. Okay. So now when I do my spray painting, these two areas are going to be protected from any uh, overspray from the, uh, from the paint. It's not going to get in and foul the uh, contacts here at the points. It's not going to get in here and foul the electrical uh, connection between the closure rails and the point rails. So I'm going to do that with all of my uh, turnouts here before I get started. Now another thing that you should have ready, and uh, we'll go back over this in a few minutes, but after you're finished doing your painting, you want to let it sit a few minutes and start to harden, but you don't want to leave it sit and get really good and hard. And the reason for that is if you allow that to dry firmly uh, overnight, for example, it's going to be very difficult to get that paint off of there. And I've known people that ended up having to scrape it with the flat blade of a screwdriver in order to get it off the top of the rails. So what I do is I'll take some scrap pieces of cork uh, roadbed like this and just run that over it. And that will usually bring it off. In extreme cases, you might have to get a, uh, a, one of these Bright Boy uh, uh, rail cleaners and they're abrasive and they will take it off as well. But I only do that as a last resort because I don't like using abrasives a lot for rail cleaners on the layout. I prefer to use something like the cork, which is, you know, no abrasive at all. And it's going to rub it off as long as it has not firmly dried and really adhered to the tops of these rails. Okay, so that's the first thing. So let me go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and finish applying the tape over all of my... Um, over all of my turnouts, and then we'll get started with the airbrush. One thing I strongly recommend is, even though this is not an organic uh, base paint, use a, uh, a dust mask, a particle mask of some kind, because you don't want to be breathing in any of the overspray. Now, once I put this on, I'm not going to be able to talk because it's going to be muffled. Plus, the vacuum cleaner is going to be going, so I'm going to need to shut the volume off anyway. Uh, but basically, what you want to do is come in here 
and spray at a low angle because you're trying to catch the sides of the rails. And then just spray and then do it from both sides and that's it. Uh, at a later date we'll come back and do the uh, top down when we do the weathering of the ballast. But for right now we just want to catch the insides of the rails on both of these and that's best done by spraying at a fairly low angle instead of a top down catch the top of the rails type of thing. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get ready and start spraying. Okay, so you can see I've gotten a pretty good coverage here, and sometimes I actually go back and make two passes on this kind of thing, because you do want uh, to get good coverage. And very often with these water-based acrylics, uh, you will not get complete coverage on the first blow-by. At least that's been my experience. So I like to come back after it's dried a bit and give it another shot later on. And uh, that's, that's about all there is to it. I'm going to go ahead and start working on this second track back here while this one up front is drying. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and uh, proceed to paint the rest of the rails here on this side of the module. And then I'll go ahead and work from the other side, spraying back, getting the back sides of these rails. Because you never know when you're going to take a photograph, you might end up with the back side in the picture or if in a movie, you might end up with both sides of the rails. So it's a good idea. Go ahead and get it finished. Uh, I think I'm going to come back down here and do the white a plaster section here first and get that painted. Okay, so as I said, I'm going to go ahead now and hit the uh, plaster and get this all painted a nice brown color uh, in preparation for actually applying some ballast over those rails.
Okay, so that got that pretty well coated. I did it from both sides to give an example. So now I'm going to move back here and finish the rest of this uh, rail here. Okay, so that's a good start uh, on getting this done. And I think, let's see here. Now this area that I did at the, the beginning is ready for, uh, for scraping. It's dried enough so that I can go ahead and remove paint from the tops of the rails, as you can see there, without damaging the paint underneath. And it comes off very easily, as you can see. Let me get that guy out of the way. There we go. And on these point rails, you need to work and get those cleaned out. Okay. There we go. Okay, so that's all there is to it. Let me I'll zoom in just a little bit so we can take a closer look at the paint job. So you can see we've got good coverage, reasonably good coverage on the, uh, uh, on the web of the rail. And uh, like I said, those uh, rail heads clean up real easy with a, a little piece of leftover cork road bed. Okay, now that it's had a chance to dry and I've cleaned off the top of the rails, what I want to do is come back one more time and give it another pass because, as I said earlier, it can get uh, a bit thin uh, when you're applying these, uh, these acrylics. Uh, now, if you don't have access to an airbrush, now you can use things like these, um, you know, spray cans. Um, you can use spray cans like this and uh, get a fairly good coverage. However, let me point out, you know, these are enamels in many cases. And uh, you're going to need to do it outside because you don't want to do this in your house. You don't want to be sucking up uh, volatile fumes with a, a shop vac. The smell is going to drive you out. You're going to need a special uh, gas mask for organic volatiles. And, uh, and you just don't want to get involved with doing that. So, you know, take it outside into the backyard or to the driveway or something like that and do your work outside somewhere. Don't try to spray these volatile organic compounds inside your house. It's just not a good thing to do from a health perspective at all. Okay, let me go ahead. I want to uh, go ahead and, and uh, blow some more uh, paint, another layer of paint on the side of these uh, rails, get the web covered real well, and then we'll move on uh, into, uh, into different areas on the layout. And hopefully uh, this weekend, I'll get this all uh, painted and we can move on next week to uh, painting the top of the, uh, of the foam layer here and uh, start thinking about some of the scenic work that we need to do here.
Well, that's a wrap for today's video. As you can see, there's really no magic to uh, painting the rails. Uh, it's easiest, I think, if you do have a, uh, an, an airbrush and are you know, at least halfway proficient with using it. And uh, other than that, it's just a matter of getting things set up and ready to go and then spraying away. And you know, if you do make a mistake, if you don't like the color, you can always come back and go over it again with a light coat. Something though that a lot of people sweat over because they're afraid they're gonna permanently mess up their model railroad and all the work that they've put in to doing their track. And for that reason, I think a lot of people don't bother uh, painting their track or weathering it, uh, it at all. Have a great weekend, uh, stay safe and uh, come back for the uh, video on Monday. Uh, remember, I'll be switching to the new format where we'll be doing a video on something other than dealing with the modules here. So it'll probably either be something DCC related or something in general, or maybe, maybe I'll finally get a chance to get back and start doing some more work here on the Piedmont Southern itself. So have a good one.